Hi guys, it's Friday and it's time for another UAS weekly news update. And this week, you get five topics I want to talk about. The first one is kind of a big one. We've been waiting this for a while. The FAA finally updated the Drone Zone website and now hobbyists can submit requests to fly in controlled airspace through the Drone Zone. So I'll give you more details on that. The second one is a person, a guy, who decided to drop a bomb using a drone on his ex-girlfriend's house. You may have seen this in the news. Uh, not the greatest idea. And then the third thing is I want to talk about the, uh, the new system for the DJI Mavic 2 that is uh, allowing us to tether the drone and basically fly indefinitely. Uh, number five is going to be a, a drone on Jupiter's moon, which is going to be pretty cool. This is not something I usually talk about, but I thought this was a really cool uh, story. And then the last thing is DJI came up with yet another new product this week, and they're uh, um, attacking or they're getting into yet another uh, area of drone flying. So let's talk about all of these uh, right now. First thing, exciting stuff, the FAA updated drone zone. Now, what this means for recreational pilots that live in an area that uh, does not have lands, it means that now you can submit your request through the FAA drone zone. Now, the bad news of this is that the FAA says it can take up to 45 days to process and to approve. Now, I went on there, I'm actually working on the tutorial right now, which I will release possibly before this video even goes live. but. Uh, the idea is um, I think you'll be able to get a request for an extended period of time. So if you live in that area, you fly a lot in that area, then you'll be able to get that. Now, just like it is for lands, you cannot fly above the grid that is specified in the facility map and you can only fly during daytime. So these were requirements in lands. They are also requirement in the drone zone. As a matter of fact, it says on the website that if you submit a request through the drone zone at night, it's going to be automatically denied. So uh, you can go on fa.dronezone.fa.gov and, uh, and submit your request. Like I said, I will have a video coming up so I can show you guys how to do this. It's a pretty straightforward process, but there are a few things that you need to pay attention to. Next thing, uh, not the smartest thing, but uh, I think it's important to, to mention these things when they happen. Uh, a guy in Pennsylvania has been accused of using a drone to drop uh, explosive devices on his ex-girlfriend's home. Now, uh, sadly, on top of it, he was actually on meth when he um, was arrested in June. So combination of drugs, alcohol probably, and a whole bunch of things, uh, just not a good thing. So I just want to mention this real quickly. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this, but um, uh, people will do stupid things with drones. And fortunately, we're the one suffering the consequences in this case. Cool technology next is a tethering device for DJI Mavic. Now, Mavic 2. Now, if you don't know what a tether is, a tether is a cable that's gonna be connected on the ground and it's gonna allow you to fly the drone and basically use the battery that's located on the ground. Now, this device is really cool. It's uh, made by a company in Singapore called Valerius. And uh, I don't know where I've heard that name. That name sounds familiar, now that I say it out loud. Anyway, um, the, um, the, the, the system is designed to be, it's 30 pounds. It's a box with batteries in it. It's got six batteries in it. And it can actually host the batteries. The will will give you flight time for two hours. But the cool thing is that you can actually swap the batteries. It's called hop swapping the batteries, and you can change them and basically keep going and keep adding batteries. And you can keep as long as you have batteries going on. You can keep flying the drone. Now the cable is attached by a cable. It has to. It's 60 meters long, which is about 200 feet long, and it's designed to not tangle up. So there's actually a tension on the cable, so it stays in place. Uh, price tag will be available in November. Price tag is $7,900. Uh, you can go on their website, valorius.com, and then see uh, the, the device by yourself. I went on the website. Um, it, it, it's not the most professional looking website, so I hope the quality of the product kind of uh, doesn't go along with the quality of the website. But with that being said, I think it's cool technology. It exists for other drones that I had never seen it for the Mavic 2. Um, and so if you do something that requires a tether, uh, then this is, uh, this is your, your device right here. NASA is talking about sending a drone on Saturn's moon, which is Titan. And uh, that's gonna happen in 2030, in the 2030s. And the idea is to get in there to find what the chemistry looks like up there 
uh, that can probably explain how life started on Earth, which is, you know, pretty cool technology. Uh, the, uh, the drone in itself, which is what we're interested in in the show, is it's an eight rotor drone. This thing is actually huge. Uh, it's almost the size of a car. And it's gonna be uh, launched in 2026 and it's supposed to get there in 2034. So it's gonna spend a few years in space. And uh, the way that it's gonna be powered, it's not gonna be solar, it's actually gonna be a nuclear powered uh, electric motor. So it's supposed to fly for an extended period of time, kind of like what the rover did on Mars, except now it's gonna be flying. Now the, uh, the, the conditions up there are kind of uh, interesting. 179 minus 179 degrees Celsius, that's uh, almost negative 300 degrees Celsius. And uh, the atmosphere is different. The atmosphere is going to be four times denser than on the surface of the Earth. And also uh, the, the gravity is only one seventh of what it is on Earth. So it's actually going to be fairly easy to fly this drone in terms of aerodynamics, just because the air is much more dense. DJI again in the news this week with a new Phantom uh, based product, which is going to be the DJI Multispectral. Now this is the, this was a, a released at DJI Airworks, which is going on this week's this week in the, I don't even know where it is actually. And um, the the Multispectral is going to have six different sensors, including an RGB sensor, and it's basically designed to measure crop health. A weed, find if there are insects on the plants, if there is uh, soil, the, the soil condition, how, how good the soil condition is going to be. And um, what they're saying is that this is much better data than what you find with satellites, which is the way that uh, folks in agriculture these days are getting their data. So this is real time, much better data because you can make a change immediately. Now the price tag, this is supposed to come out in October, uh, $6,500. And if you want the RTK version, the more precise version with the GPS RTK, then it's going to be $9,100, okay? Um, I just find it interesting. Every week, DJI seems to be going into a different uh, section of the drone market, and they're really cornering everything with uh, a platform for basically everything that people are going to do. So um, good thing or bad thing, I don't know. I'm still on the fence with this. Uh, I like seeing innovation, but I don't like seeing monopoly. I think it's bad for the consumer. So hopefully there is some uh, uh, some people that can come up with other drones that can compete and uh, keep this going forward so they don't stop innovating. So. This is all I have for you for this week. As always, please leave a comment on anything that I talked about this week. Uh, if you like the video, believe, uh, click the like button and then uh, subscribe if you wanna get these on a regular basis. Uh, I do this every Friday, every Friday morning. It's gonna be posted at, uh, at the same time. So I appreciate you guys viewing. We're getting really, really close to a thousand subscribers. Uh, we started this not too long ago, so I'm excited we're growing really fast. And, um, and as always, if you wanna get trained for part 107, um, we have a course for this, the most comprehensive course out there, 12 and a half hours, a, a bazillion questions that you can practice with. You can uh, test yourself with uh, as many tests as you want at the very end. And of course, you've got access to me, myself, that's uh, going to answer all your questions uh, very quickly. So uh, you can sign up. The, the link is in the, in the description. Uh, that's what I do. That's what we do at Pilot Institute. We try to educate people and make sure that they make the right decision when they go fly and make sure they know what they're talking about when they get their license. So um, with this, have a great weekend and I will see you guys again next week. And I'll see you for that video where I talk about the new uh, Drone Zone website for hobbyists for the FA. All right. See you guys.